The buy-to-let property market has seen a resurgence since the UK came out of recession earlier in this decade. And although we're still a way off the levels seen before the bubble burst in 2007 and 2008, the continuation of low interest rates and consequentially attractive mortgage deals have contributed to the upturn in the market, as well as returning confidence in the long-term appreciation in value of property. However, in the summer budget this year, George Osborne announced a major blow to the sector, indicating that tax relief on mortgage interest for buy-to-let owners is going to be restricted to just basic rate. For lower earners, or for pensioners with modest retirement incomes being boosted by rental profits, the impact is unlikely to be notable. However, for higher rate taxpayers with incomes in excess of £43,000, the impact is notable. If you take, for example, an individual investor with a £200,000 mortgage on a property at 3%, they will have to pay an extra £1,200 in income tax by 2021. If you consider a portfolio investor with 10 similar properties, the impact is clearly significantly greater. A good example is quintessential luxury service departments, an established Cheltenham business offering service departments for both short and long-term lets, as well as longer-term lettings with less services. The change in rules does not affect situations where there is a trade for tax purposes, the distinction being driven by the level of services supplied by the landlord. However, for more traditional long-term lettings, the impact will be significant. As things stand, the change will cost this business nearly £12,000 a year in additional income tax by 2021. Initially, I had a passion for Regency Houses and came to live in Cheltenham, or well, near Cheltenham, and spotted a Regency House that needed a bit of TLC when I was still actually working in Wales. Bought it up, did it up and rented it as long-term apartments. And it developed from there. Um, and then we bought another big property which because of limitations with planning, we couldn't chop it up very much. Ended up spending a lot of money and getting very little return. And that's then how we got into having service departments because so, we found there was a, a niche in Cheltenham. This was probably about 2006, 2007. Um, so some of these changes that, um, that are coming in um, relate to mortgage interest. So obviously this um, is going to affect things. Yes. Um, so, so this is going to start phasing in from 2017. Um, so the effect of this is on the longer term lettings rather than the service departments because that's an area um, where you are treated as trading for tax purposes so that's going to be unaffected by this. Um, but obviously mortgage interest that you're paying on the properties on the longer term letting um, you're going to see the amount of tax relief that you get halved by 2021. Um, so this is the area where we need to um, have a look at what possibilities there are um, to do something about that. Um, some of the things we can consider and talk about in more detail are things like the business structure, um, could we use a company structure for it, um, look at where your borrowings are, is there any way to rearrange those, perhaps accelerate your repayments on the ones that are going to be affected. Um, so it's, it's those kind of solutions that I think we need to look at. I think it's great what you say and I think the possibility is hopefully that we can work with the lend different lenders that we use mm. to borrow the money to buy the properties. However, I still feel that whatever happens, we're going to miss out. If we sell them, we've got a huge capital gains tax bill, which is lovely because we've made lots of money, but you know we're going to have to give a lot back to the government. Mm. If we don't sell them and we keep them, I think the limitations, the profit margin will go down so therefore the tax won't be quite as much as it was going to be, but you're still going to have more tax, less profit, mm. so you've got double-sided. We can always hope that um, there's still time before 2017, we can always hope that they do adapt the rules to slightly take out these the people who are going to be caught in the crossfire here. Cash flow on buy-to-let property businesses is often very tight due to capital repayments on mortgages. In fact, this increase in tax could result in a cash flow loss situation for many of these businesses, which may force some of them to sell up and leave the market. In fact, researchers suggested that one in five such businesses may be forced out of business because of this. At Randall and Payne, we are advising a number of clients in this area, both where they are already in the market and where they're considering entering it for the first time. Every situation is different, and we can talk through your specific circumstances to ensure you receive the best advice. Even if you are not a Randall and Payne client, please do call us for a free initial conversation about your situation so that you can find out how the rule changes will affect you and how we are able to help you.